to Pixel Tunes Radio, a podcast where we have fun talking about video games and video game music. I am Mike. And I am Mighty Morphin Ed. Kind of fits with the theme not, of the show. Yeah, yeah I guess, yeah. Maybe sort not of. Mighty Morphin, but I'm Morphin Ed. You, you I'm Metamorphic Ed. You're Metamorphic Ed. Metamorphic Mike and Metamorphic Ed. There we go. Forceful Mike and... and meta, meta. Metamorphic Mike and Forceful Ed? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It's like the, the new superhero sidekick duo. Yeah, all right. Let's get back to business. Absolutely. We're already off track. We just started. I know. It's, this is just terrible. Can't control it. I'm just a mess. So we <laughs> promised last episode that we were going to do two awesome games this episode. We talked about it a little bit and felt that these games probably deserve their own episodes. That's so right. So what we're going to do is uh, take these two awesome arcade games that we wanted to bring you guys and kind of split it into two smaller episodes, and we're going to release them on consecutive weeks instead of every other week. So right. we're doing it like Kill Bill style. Word. So we're going to start off, if you haven't guessed by now, with Metamorphic Force, which was a Konami arcade game released in 1993. It is actually one of the last side-scrolling beat-em-ups to appear in the arcades from Konami. So sad. Yeah. I used to have so much fun playing like X-Men and... Turtles, Ninja Turtles. Yeah, definitely and, my favorite genre. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, Capcom and Konami really had it down when they came to beat em ups in the arcade. Yeah. And uh, I, I don't know. I don't think I ever saw a Metamorphic Force I've arcade never seen cabinet one. myself. Not, no. um, you know, we definitely found out about this game through emulation, and I would pay anything to go play the real thing. Oh, absolutely. It's so good. Yeah. I'd pay exactly $10 and quarters. You probably wouldn't end up paying about $10 and quarters. Yeah, exactly $10. Exactly? Yes, exactly. I would like to see that. Yeah. I would like to just let, let you beat that on your 40th quarter. That is what's going to happen. <laughs> that is happening. We are going to track down We're gonna have Metamorphic to Force. Crisscross the country. If, I, if any of our listeners hear us, hear our plea, we want to play Metamorphic Force. Tell us where we can play it. And if you say some... At weird... least in the Northeast U.S. Yeah. That would be probably <laughs> beneficial. <laughs> if you Well, if you say, like, some dude's creepy basement, I'm going to be like, nah. I'm yeah. good. Come here, kids. I've got metamorphic force for you. You let them play this game in my basement here, <laughs> sit in this chair that's electrified. I mean, special. Wow. <laughs> Horrifying. <laughs> so that track that brought us in was called AD 1990X, and that basically is a song that plays during the intro cinematic to the game where the attract screen, as they call it in the arcades. Basically tells you a little bit of the story of the game. The dialogue goes, after many years of peace and quiet, the evil king, ruler of the Empire of Horror, which, I mean, I don't even know. <laughs> the anyway, Empire of Horror. He's arisen from the dead, and he's looking to rule the world again. So he's kind of just shopping it around. So he did rule the world and, at one point. Yes. And, and now he no longer, uh, no longer So the concept them. is that okay. these four animal spirits that guard the planet inhabit heroes to go okay. beat this evil king once he's arisen again. So that's the whole concept behind the game is that the evil king arises and then these four heroes, Bon, Claude, Max, and Ivan, they all get inhabited by these spirits and they become the metamorphic force or the metamorphic warriors right. and then they go beat up dudes to epic music prog rock yes yeah <laughs> the, the really funny thing that i like about this is that they all have 80s haircuts oh yeah 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 i mean it's a 93 game but they definitely yeah. were a little bit behind the times in yeah. terms of music and hair and 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 <laughs> fashion yeah totally <laughs> i think they're all from like different parts of the world too because like <clears throat> ivan is very russian ish yes he turns ivan... into a bear it's literally ivan the bear yeah so we'll get into the, the characters now yes. i guess um so you play as bon who's a martial artist and he's Chinese, and his guardian soul is a fighting bull, so he turns into a minotaur. Next up is Claude, who's a swordsman who wields a saber, and he turns into a white werewolf when he powers up. There's Max, who's a boxer, and he turns into a black werepanther. 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 Okay, then. And then Ivan, who we just talked about, he's a hunter and wrestler. Uh, he fights using a big log. Because, you know, what else do Russians fight with? Listen, as soon as I saw this dude, I was like, that's my character. And then when I saw he turn into a bear, I was like, oh my god, this is my favorite character. Who is fighting? A bear is fighting. Yeah. How can that be? How can that be? And it's actually a werebear, just so you know. No, he's, he's a bear. <laughs> he's a bear dude. I prefer to use the term bear dude. 
Bear dude? Bear dude. Where bear dude? Where bear dude. I'm okay with that. Well, the Greek goddess Athena summons them. Yes, exactly. Right, right. Exactly. So you see her on the screen and then the dialogue appears It's very Captain Planet-ish. It does have that feel it, it to it. It has that feel like, Our you know, powers combined. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it borrows a lot from that kind of stuff, Here's I the think. animal tears. <laughs> you can be one too. So the, the art style of the game is actually very similar to X-Men. Very similar. All the so sprite design. a lot design. of the same staff work yeah. on it. Basically, you can play. There's, there's two-player version cabinets and four-player version cabinets. And so, you know, you can really just get in there and start beating the crap out of people with as many friends as you want. Things get really chaotic. They do. Players. They get insane. Uh, we recently had, I think we talked about it last episode, yeah. during that, that little beat-em-ups night that we had at my house, we played this game, and that's when we decided we really need to do an episode just on this game because right. the, the music and the graphics just all were, were perfect. We yeah. really wanted to share this game. It was a lot of fun. So we were playing with four people, and man, it was, it was a blast. It was very it was confusing crazy. at points, like... You know, one of our friends was like, I don't know what I'm doing! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So before we get into the first track, we're going to talk about the first stage a little bit. It's kind of a get-to-know-your-game stage, kind of a bit. You're fighting among some Greek ruins, and it kind of basically introduces you to how the game works. Now, obviously, it's a beat-em-up, so right. the first thing you're going to do is walk up to enemies and start punching them. Really? Um, I, I handed my guys flowers, and I was like, play, be my it's friend. It's not a flower-em-up. <laughs> flower-em-up. Or a butter em up. A butter em up. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of really cool like imagery throughout the entire level though. There's, you know, the Roman pillars as we said before. There's the Greek goddess statues in the background, and then they have like a you know devil statue when you get to the main boss and you know you're you're going through this area and you see like the floors are all like tiled floors and they have they're cracked, you know, certain tiles are are cracked. Yeah, and uh, so each level has its own um, kind of unique enemy that you fight within that area. So the first level just has the default characters, which are mutated iguanas and pigs. And uh, the pigs are kind of a little beefier, and they fight with some some weapons sometimes. And Wouldn't iguanas be... are basically your generic two P kind of guys Wouldn't... from from Final Fight. You Wouldn't know? they be more hammier, not beefier? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you can't hardly have a. I guess uh, I guess. Bomb yes. would be the beefy one. Yes, he's yes. the bull. And so anyways, as you're fighting as these normal people, you can get these gold statues. And the gold statues are what turn you into your minotaur form. It's very much like Altered Beast, where you just kind of see a transformation sequence, and then all of a sudden your powers are increased, you look like an animal, uh, and then you can basically kick even more crap out of the bad guys. Yeah, this is definitely X-Men, the arcade game meets Alter Altered Beast. Beast. Yeah, Very much totally so. Totally agree with you there. Yeah. I just wish this game had the like that dual screen, oh. you know, the X-Men had. Oh my. You can only play this on one monitor, That's but it would have been really good because it's a really gorgeous game. Yes. So anyways, uh, let's get into the first track, which is called The Ruins of Bakarus. And this is for the first stage. And when we come back, we'll talk a little bit about the music.
You did it. You've accomplished the first stage. Yes. So we didn't talk about the boss of the stage, which no. is actually kind of funny, because he's a goat. Yes. And uh, so... A dude goat. Yes. And he... A goat screams. dude? So very similar to the X-Men game, uh, the bosses kind of shout something at you every time you get to them. And uh, so this guy goes, I'll never let you step in this area. And then he immediately steps out of the area and lets you step into the area he's in. He's on like this little, all the bosses come out of uh, like a little pentagram kind of symbol on the yeah, ground. Yeah. And uh, so he's like, okay, so you think he's going to put like this force field up around this pentagram thing. And he doesn't, and you're just, you know, fighting him inside the area that he said he's never going to let you step well, in. So. Yeah, it's like uh, it's like the X-Men arcade game, you know, with the blob. They're all full of hot air. When he's like, nothing stops the blob, and then and you then just, you like, punch blob. him in the face. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the music, what do you think about first track? I loved it. I mean, I love the whole soundtrack, but this track is a great, like, first introduction to the game, and it gets you pumped, it gets you psyched to play the game. Absolutely. And, I know, feel like a, there's a lot of kind of Castlevania feel music in yeah. this game. And uh, so I think it starts off, it has like a real kind of a, a Rondo of Blood kind of feel to yeah. it. And then uh, just really gets into this just awesome rock song. Yeah, it's uh, it's got a really great sound to it. The guitars are really sharp and the drums snap really well. Like the snare drums. I almost thought that this was an actual kit that they were playing on. Yeah, but... this is all on the Konami Mystic Warriors hardware. Right. Which used two basically really powerful sampling chips for the music, which uh, I think we talked about it when we did the Gradius Arcade music on the first uh, same, same song, song, different system, system episode, right, right. where it samples at like 48 kilohertz. So it's actually higher than CD quality that these samples can be can be recorded that's at. That's crazy. So that's why all of these instruments sound really, really good. And you're right. gonna notice in a lot of these songs, they have really epic guitar solos. Mm. And they're all entirely sequenced. None of it was recorded. Right, right. So, you know, you're hearing both the talent and the programming of the music and the high quality samples. It just combines to make a really, really good soundtrack. Yeah. I feel like we should probably start talking a little bit about the composers as well. well. Yeah. We'll talk about the first guy, Mutsuhiku Izumi. He's got quite a few games to his name. He actually started off doing a composition for Snatcher in uh, 1998 and then worked on Crime Fighters in 1989. Crime Fighters is actually in the same series as the game we're going to review next episode, but we'll save that title until the end of the episode. Oh, snap. He worked on Metal Gear Solid 2 in 1990. Then after Metamorphic Force in 93, went on to do Crypt Killer. He did some uh, lyrics for Beat Mania, a Pentagata mix. Rumble Roses in 2004, and then wrote some new tracks for Beat Mania 2 DX 14 Gold in 2008. So a lot of these games that he's worked on are well known for their pretty decent soundtracks. Yeah, he's done other stuff as well, like uh, he's been mentioned in other games. He doesn't necessarily have a specific role, uh, like in Sexy Par Parodius. Uh, he was labeled as the original AC staff. Well, AC is usually arcade, so he probably worked on that game in some capacity. Right, and then for Marshall Champion in 93, which was the same year that Metamorphic Force was released, he was known as Special Staff. Yeah, Marshall Champion uses the same audio hardware, so maybe he lended some support in terms of programming and stuff, but not Possibly. actually wrote the, the soundtrack for it. So after you beat the first level, and you beat the boss, what, what's, what does it say across the screen? You've done it, yeah. it says across You've the screen. You've done it. Like, what have I done? Um, basically, <laughs> what, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> Once you beat a boss, a whole bunch of treasure chests just kind of drop out of nowhere, and you've got a limited amount of time to pick up as many power-ups as you possibly can. The crappy thing about this game is that your energy depletes over time, whether you're getting hit by enemies or not. So yeah. you start off at, like, 99, and then, like, every two or three seconds, your health drops by a point. So even if you're just, if you're doing really well, you have to keep picking up health power-ups in order to keep yourself alive. Also, when you metamorph into a beast, your power meter drains for that, too. And there's no way to replenish that. If you right. get another golden statue while you're a metamorph, you basically zip around the screen. It's kind of like an extra special move, but it doesn't replenish your power meter. Yeah, it's kind of like Nightcrawler's move in X-Men in the arcade game. Very similar to that. Yeah, yeah. it's very similar. Uh, so it does kind of give you, you know, an incentive to keep bumping in quarters because no matter what you do, you're eventually going to end up running out of energy. I think that's one of the big draws of these games is the great graphics and, and strong music and everything. Even though the music was, as we said in the previous episode about arcade games, it, the music is so good, but you, you never get the chance to hear it because you're in an, ar an arcade exactly. environment. Exactly. And when, then when you sit down and with your friends, you know, nowadays and play these games on like, you know, computers like desktop hard drives or whatever you're, you're putting the games onto, maybe arcade cabinets and whatnot, 
you, you kind of get a sense of the music because you're actually able to hear it for the first time. You're not surrounded by 50 other arcade machines all pumping out this noise and sound. It's you yeah. know, you're able to focus on one thing at the same time, and I think I think that's one of the big reasons why arcades slowly but surely died is you know not only the fact that these games are being brought to home consoles, but at the same time home consoles were becoming so much more powerful that you really didn't need to bring these type of games. Yeah, well there wasn't that sense of wonder going to the arcade. Right. You know, you weren't playing 16-bit games when all you had at home was was 8-bit stuff. True. So, you know, unfortunately, well, I guess the good thing is at least in Japan, soundtracks for arcade games are much more popular. Right. This soundtrack was actually released as a physical CD in Japan. It came up with uh, Marshall Champion. And like a pro soccer game, okay. like one of the PES games from yeah. Konami. It all it all came on one soundtrack. So I would love to get my hands on a CD version of this soundtrack. That would be incredible. Yeah. So, anyways, we're not gonna be able to get to every single piece of music because there's like 30 tracks in this entire game. Right. So we're gonna unfortunately skip over the second stage, which is a volcano level. The unique enemy that you fight there is a hedgehog creature man. I thought that was kind of neat. Yeah. Kind of like you know Sonic, but I, I think gross. Best known as Sarnik the Herge Hog. Sarnik the Herge Herg. Yeah. Beat a big <laughs> flamey bird boss, and then you move on to stage three, which goes from a volcano level into winter frozen wonderland. So for some reason, the unique enemy that you fight in the winter stage is an elephant. That makes sense. You'd think it would be like a penguin. Total sense. Polar bear. No, penguins aren't vicious. I mean, they can look vicious, but they don't... But elephants aren't vicious either. Elephants? Neither are hedgehogs. I think an I think an elephant would kill you more, uh, sooner than a penguin well, yeah, would. Yeah, but they don't really evoke that sense of fear that they have giant horns on their face. I guess. So there's a giant boss at the end of this stage, which kind of looks like Megatron a little bit. You look like Megatron. I try. Thanks. Yeah. Did my hair different this morning. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> And uh, he's he's kind of a jerk, and he will fly around, beat the crap out of you, yeah. and uh, then he blows into pieces at the end. And uh, the thing I like about the stage is that the the ice under your feet is reflective, so you can see a reflection of your character as you're as you're playing through the stage. Um, that is cool. Also, midway literally the stage, cool. It is very very cool. <laughs> midway through the stage, a, a giant version of the boss will come up in the background and start spitting bugs at you for some non particular reason. It's kind of like in X-Men Arcade, the the level where the little, the boss, the mini boss, because there's always in these games mini bosses that come up and start spitting stuff yeah, at yeah. you, and you know, these little project, I don't want to call them projectiles, but they're more like tiny, annoying enemies. I mean, Konami's Nuisances. been, yes, Konami's been doing this for years with all of the bunch of various different arcade games, you know, Ninja Turtles had it, this has stupid it. stupid things that are really hard to hit. Yeah, And it yeah. would take like one hit to go down, like right. the Mousers. Yeah. You know? Yep. Terrible. I agree. I concur. So let's get into the music. This is Freezing Ground, Stage 3, from Metamorphic Force.
welcome back. That was Freezing Ground, stage three. Yes. I really like the visual aspects of this level. You've got, you know, these guys that are crystallized in the background, like, you know, some of the enemies that you would normally fight, like the lizards that are, you know, obviously frozen over. Uh, then you've got crystals on the on the top layer, okay? And then in the background, you've got this like swirling, like blue icy void. And then on the ground, you've got, because the ground is very similar to, as we've been talking about before, very inspired by X-Men arcade. So you can move all around the whole screen, you know, Ninja Turtles, you know, that whole thing that for arcade games, you've got a reflection in the ice of your sprite, which it's I crazy, just thought yeah. is the coolest thing. Like. The visuals in this game are intense. Everything was built to look amazing. Oh yeah, and uh, it's. I think it's one of those games where like it was built so, if you weren't playing it and you were just walking by and watching a demo, you'd be like, "This looks like a cartoon." I yeah. need to actually play this game. Yeah, you know, that's very that true. kind of deal. It totally looks like. And a it's cartoon. funny, even though this is a, a freezing level stage, the music doesn't really evoke that kind of like winter no. music. It's got really intense drums. Yeah. But there's really, really rocking flutes with electric guitars in the background. Oh my god, those flutes. They sound exactly like real flutes. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. It's really it's 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 really good stuff. It's not like we're talking like Jethro Tull style, like, you know, rocking out solos. So I really like this track a lot. It's uh probably one of my favorites. Yeah, there's one other composer credited for this game. He didn't do as much as uh, Mutsuhiko Izumi did. Uh, his name is Mariko Igawa, and he was credited for music edit on Metamorphic Force. He was also listed as a composer for Castlevania 64, believe it or not. So yeah. that's where a lot of that Castlevania feel comes from, even though that came six years later. Um, he was I also uh, a work <clears throat> he was also uh, involved in the art and graphics departments for Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn and Lost Odyssey, and then most recently worked on Yakuza 4 as a designer in 2011. So he's had some work in and about different areas of the industry besides just music. It's interesting that he composed the music for Castlevania 64 because that soundtrack is a lot more ambient than anything. Yeah. I mean, there are some moments that are very bombastic, very like loud sounding, but for the most part, it's not your standard Castlevania soundtrack in most cases. Oh yeah, and it's certainly nothing like Metamorphic Force. Right, absolutely. So maybe yeah. he was just kind of responsible for a lot of those more, like I said, you know, more Castlevania sounding kind yeah. of stuff. I think the organs really help throughout the game. So yeah, I was really feeling that track. So then the next track that we're gonna listen to is from level four of this game, but it is not the beginning. So this level is actually probably one of the longer levels of the game. Yeah, it's got two distinct parts to it. Right, and so the first part is very, for the music at least, it's very fusion-esque. Yes. Very jazz fusion mixed with very orchestral elements, really. Doesn't kind of fit a beat em up that No, much. no, I mean, it's, it's kind of like this weird swirling kind of, you know, something's gonna happen, what's yeah. gonna happen sort of sound to it. First part of the level, you come out of the cave from the previous ice world, and you're all of a sudden in a, like a really beautiful lush forest. Hey and, guys. Yeah, and so you start fighting Enemies, as usual. Frogs. Uh, frogs. Frogs and, in this level, along yeah. with some um, anthropomorphic trees. Yes. Which is fun. Everybody is likes fun. fighting trees. Oh, yeah. You know it. <laughs> That's what I do in my off time. <laughs> Just go around and punch the forest. Punch, punch the tree in the face. <laughs> Take that tree. It's like, you know, Wizard of Oz. Yeah, you How'd know. How'd you like if somebody came along and grabbed an apple off of you? <laughs> <laughs> so... You go over a cliff, and that's when this level's music starts, when the fourth stage, part two. I really think that this track is pretty awesome. Yes. Yeah? Yes. I'm feeling it. Once you fight your way to this kind of like waterfall thing, you fall off this cliff, and it takes about like 30 seconds to fall down the entire cliff, and you wind up in front of this kind of a skull monster face on the side of the, the, the ground of the rock face, and it opens up. And, you know, I always think, even though I know what's going to happen, Shit. I always think that you have to walk into this cave, even though it's on the left side of the screen. So I go towards the cave, and a bunch of rocks fly out, and inevitably just knock me over and 
probably kill me at that point because it's like midway through the stage and my health is almost gone. Mom, I need more quarters! Yeah, exactly. So a couple pigs come out, you fight through them, and then you continue to the right, away from the cave that just mm -hmm. opened. And so that's when this awesome rock music starts to play. And we'll talk about that a little bit when we come back from the break. Enjoy Human Soldier, fourth stage, part two. This was probably one of my favorite tracks yeah. in the game, I think. Okay. I specifically inserted this one after you had made your initial picks for this game. True. It's called Human Soldier, and uh, I don't know, those heavy drums just got me, man. They yeah, drew man. my ear right in. Drums sound great and those in this chuggy game. guitars in the background. You know, it kind of starts off a little bit on the side, but then once those drums kick in, mm -hmm. boom. Yeah. And that solo at the end, like, this. Just guitar solos everywhere in this game. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of that stuff like in real life, but <laughs> I don't know, for some reason when it's sequenced, I just drool all over them. It's crazy. <laughs> That's I don't understand. so funny. I need therapy well, or something. Uh, you must. You, mean, you need music therapy. <laughs> music therapy. Yes. Exactly. And it's strange hearing that from you because I know you're a, a, more of an electronic guy and this is sequenced music. So. Yeah. I mean, I've said it before, I really like electronic rock. I like when sequenced music imitates rock music. Right. Don't know why I don't like regular rock music. That's so weird. It's it's bizarre. Yeah. Um, but I think it's because I appreciate the, like, the skill that goes into programming something or sequencing something that makes it sound like it was organic. Like, it's right. electronics imitating organics, I right. guess, is, is kind of like why I like the concept behind it. Mm. But, you know, this song is a perfect example of that. It's very impressive. The overall sound quality is extremely impressive, and I know we talked a little bit about earlier in the, the, the fact that the, they use two chips, basically, to be able to fuse this music, but yeah. it's just really rich sounding and could easily be confused, very easily be confused for actual instruments yeah, in yeah. most cases. I mean, in a lot of cases with the with the more synth aspects, no. But the guitars, the, the flutes, the drums, all sound really crisp and clean. So after the forest level in which you fight this crazy purple two-headed ogre It's like yellow thing. purple dude with two heads. Two heads, but yeah. they each have one eye. So it's like a double-headed cyclops. Right. That's weird. Uh, yeah. Do you think they have double vision? Double vision. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you beat this big purple thing that looks like that two-headed monster from Sesame Street. <laughs> and uh, The colors certainly do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, so he dies, and then you end up in bonus stage number two. So we didn't right. really talk about bonus stage number one, but it was basically yeah. just one of those standard, there's a big statue in the middle of the screen, and you just punch the crap out of it. Right. You know, kind of like your standard... Um, Ryu beats up the car right. kind of stage. Except nobody comes out and goes, Oh, my, my statue! God. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, so this one, this one's actually kind of unique because you're running like full blast force across this rocky ground and there are pillars that you basically have to smash through. So you can attack using the attack button, but I don't really think it does right. that much. Your running is doing um, all the damage. Yeah, you can basically yeah. just smash through everything. And so you basically guide your way through these pillars. The pillars have power-ups in them. After a while, the pillars start becoming enemies, and so you're just smashing through the enemies. And then at the end, uh, the entire screen is basically filled with enemies, and you're just running through them and uh, you know, gaining power-ups and points and stuff. And at the end, it tells you how good you've done. But the, the cool thing about it is the music in the background is like speed metal at its finest. Oh, yeah. It's ridiculous. It's really good stuff. So why don't we take a listen to that one? This is called Hurry from Bonus Stage 2. Hurry up! here for Force Mo Industries, bringing you the latest in animal magnitude power sense. I'm here with Pritchard. Um, that's Richard. Shut up, Pritchard. And we're unveiling the product of a lifetime. Check this out. Metamorphic Force Cologne. You're probably wondering, hey, why is Force Mo Industries creating a product based on a relatively obscure Konami beat-em-up arcade game? That's exactly what I'm wondering. Shut up, Pritchard! Well, I'll tell you all about the industry-changing serum that women are raving about. Metamorphic Force turns your man into an animal. Literally. Just one spray on the face. Hey, cut, cut that out! Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, biscuits! What's wrong with me? That's right, for 8 to 12 hours, your man will be part man, part animal, thanks to Metamorphic Force. Play fetch with him. Teach him to fight other manimals surrounded by Roman pillars. Sure, you can't woo him in the bedroom like this, but man, is this cool or what? I'm Willie Maisie, and I approve this product by Forcemo. Use as directed. Die with your boots on. No fear the reaper. Metamorphic Force Cologne is not to be used as a breath freshener. Do not apply anywhere other than the face. Forcemo Industries does not take any responsibility for anything that happens using our products. Ever. Call 1-800-255-3700 to order. No CODs. Welcome back. Whew. God, I'm dizzy. Oh, man. <laughs> That was Hurry. It's probably more notes in that 30 second loop than there is in most of the songs in this entire game. <laughs> yeah, that's just straight up speed metal right there. Yeah. I love it. It's great stuff. I mean, it's very simple. It's very punk speed metal. You know, just how fast can we play these notes? Let's play it. Yeah. And then I love the streaks of the- Those guitar the, slides. The guitar slides are just awesome. Yeah, really you were saying it reminds you of F-Zero. It definitely reminds definitely. you of F-Zero, like uh, GX. Like F-Zero GX, F-Zero X, right, right. Yeah. yeah, really good stuff. Yeah, no, I dig it. So, I mean, we talked about the stage already, so... Yeah, obviously the song's not that long because the yeah. bonus stage isn't that long. Yeah. So after you beat bonus stage two, you find yourself in a coliseum. Yes. And it's got a cool little scaling rotation effect. The stage is very small because it's actually kind of a boss rush mode. Right. As you move back and forth, the walls of the coliseum kind of rotate. And they kind of shift when you move. Almost like you're, yeah, almost like it's like Google Maps or something like that. <laughs> so it gives kind of a, an, an impression that you're in a circular arena. Um, That's what they were going for. You know, Google Maps. Google Maps. That was, yeah. I'm sure, what they said. In 93. Were, yes. Yeah. We want this to look like Google Maps. Yes. Boss, <laughs> what? <laughs> so anyways, when what happens is the bosses that you fought throughout the game come out two by two. So you get, you know, stage one and two at the same time. Right. Stage three and four at the same time. And you basically have to fight your way through them. And it's a lot easier when you have, like, four people playing oh, yeah. this game. Because I went a through crazy, a single though. player and trying to beat two bosses... Two like fully powered level bosses at the same time with one player is it's rough stuff. Yeah, it's and they don't hard. wait either. No. It's not like they're waiting for you to finish beating the first boss and then oh second boss is going to come in. No, it's 
two bosses at a time, basically, at a clip. Yeah, but it's got some epic music to help you out yes, to get through it. Very much so. So why don't we get into that? This is called Colosseum of Revenge. Just imagine you're fighting like half a dozen bosses while listening to this track. Yeah. Yeah. So after taking down those bosses, <laughs> what happens is the fifth boss shows up. And so it's this purple-esque, you know those she-devil pinup girls? Those, those yeah. that art that you see? She looks a lot like that, I think. Yeah, very, you know, Amazon-ish, busty. In like an aerobic bathing suit. Yeah, like a weird blue. Blonde hair. Yeah, just very weird. And she's got this very high-pitched voice, you know, kind of higher pitched female voice, and you just and smack her in the mouth as soon as she starts talking, just like all the other bosses. Exactly, and she, she has kind of like aerobic <laughs> style moves too, she right. like flips and, yeah. and jumps and pounces and stuff, and so she's like the, she's called the she-devil of the Colosseum, which is right. also what the music is called when, uh, when she comes out. She's kind of difficult, I think, you know, after fighting four bosses in a row, you get a little tired of beating bosses, so she's not, I, I don't think she's the toughest one of the game. No, definitely, she definitely not. definitely gives you a little bit of an issue. Yeah. And uh, so you fight her in the same area, that Colosseum area, but the music is really good, and it's probably one of the more unique ones throughout the game. It's a little more prog, you'll, you'll definitely yeah. hear it. So yeah. why, don't we, why don't we give it a spin? This is She-Devil of the Colosseum, fifth stage, boss.
Welcome back. I love Dat Bass. The Slap Bass is great. This is more of a proggy song, like I said before. It doesn't really have a set yeah. time signature. It's very simple, I would say, in terms of the main melody. It's very, you know, kind of like you're fighting a boss, but the, the bass in this just, it, it's awesome. Yeah, and it kind of like the bass kind of follows like a call and response with the keyboard right. line. It's yeah. really cool. Yeah, it's really cool. And the notes that they're playing are kind of all over the place. It's not really staying in any one. It's, yeah, it lots of runs up and yeah, down. Yeah, 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 yeah. And even like up and down, not just up and down on the frets, but also up and down like in terms of the actual like strings. So it's kind of all over the place. Yeah. Yeah, I dig it. It's good stuff. Mm -hmm. It's good for that that kind of a boss because she's so energetic. Yeah. And it just kind of, uh, and she's kind of unpredictable too. She doesn't really follow a set pattern. So right. the song kind of feels the same way. You don't really know what's coming next. And she kind of keels over after you get her, you know, beat her up for a bit and she's flashing just like in all beat em ups and at that point, she's, what does she say? She goes, my lord. Yeah. And then that's it. And that's it. She yeah. dies. She kills over. Yeah. And I always thought she, it was, she was saying like, my lord, like, oh my God. But I think she's actually talking about, because she's like pointing out into the distance. Right. So I think she's like, my lord, I failed you. Like right. the, the lord is the, the, I can't the help guy. Think of um, Star Fox 64. My emperor. My I emperor. failed you. Exactly. Yeah, I think yeah. that's, that's what she was going for. There. That is. She was like, you know what? Star Fox 64 isn't out yet, but I'm going <laughs> to quote it. <laughs> I didn't mean that exactly. <laughs> Anywho, so after beating the She-Devil of the Coliseum, you are on to stage six, which is the final level of the game. This is a short game. For a beat em up, especially. I mean, beat em ups usually are about eight to ten stages, usually yeah, in yeah. most cases. But yeah, this one's got uh, it's it's style over substance or style uh, quantity quality over quantity. There you go. Yes, you were gonna hit that eventually. I was I was working on it. You um, know? yeah, I think games like this where there's so much work that's put into it, you know, they definitely like you said, quality versus quantity. They yeah. put a lot of time into the art and the music and the design, and so they don't put as much into making the game, you know, like extra stages and stuff like that. But it's yeah. fine. I mean, I'd rather have a game that looks and plays incredible and have six stages than something that's not great and has ten stages. Yeah. You know, I'm going to play those six stages over and over again more so than I would play, yeah. you know, a crappy game with ten stages. So. The, the problem with these games is that they get old fast because it's a button masher. You're yeah. pretty much hitting the same button, trying to accomplish the same mission as everybody else. So it's not really like other action games like, you know, modern day platformers or, you know, action titles from back in the day, you know, on the Super Nintendo or Genesis. Yeah. There was I, a lot more variety. Yeah. Dynamic. Yeah. Gameplay. Yeah. I find I mean I, I'm such a big fan of beat em ups that I can I can play a game like this where it is kind of the same over and over again, beat it. You know, I don't necessarily want to get right back into it, but right. a couple months later I'm like, yeah, I'll totally do that again. Right. Like Final Fight, man. I still will play that oh, at least yeah. three or four times a year. Absolutely. As as generic and plain as that game is, it's just so much fun to play. It's great soundtrack, great graphics, great everything. Yeah. Just a lot of fun to play. So I agree with you that Final Fight is one of those games that I will break out a couple times a year and just play through. And just from a visual standpoint, I think like this and X-Men and uh, probably the game that we're going to be talking about next episode, there's, there's just so much detail and so much effort and work put into it. You kind of notice new things yeah. every single time you, you play it again and new right. details and new animations. So this kind of it's a it's a treat for the eyes and of course you got awesome music to listen to as well so Absolutely. you really can't complain yeah it's a shame that these games didn't come out on consoles unfortunately which is a shame because you know unlike Battletoads Arcade which just was recently announced that's coming out on on Rare's compilation for the Rare Xbox Xbox. One yep. right which I'm like amazed at I'm like they probably I was so knew. happy when I saw that they, were, they probably knew that fans were like oh my god you need to put this out on something that's not the arcade so we can actually play yeah, it yeah. and so I feel like with Metamorphic Force and with the other game that we're going to talk about. They'd be great on Konami they, collections. They would be so great on a Konami Especially collection. Especially when Konami's kind of clamoring for quality stuff now, you know? Put out a couple of old, get people interested in the brand again. Well, that's the problem is is they don't care about brand. 
you know, Konami is just such a different company. Well, they don't care about they, their history, I don't think. At right, this point. I think that's what the big big issue is, is they don't care about their history, they just want to move forward. And that's fine, I understand that, but at the same time, like, you, you get can't these... survive on Metal Gear Solid. No. You can't survive on one you, title, you can't, sorry. Yeah, no, it's not going to happen. And sure, you're, maybe your PES soccer games are doing great in Europe, but sure. meanwhile the Americans are like, you're a one-trick pony, right. and you just lost that trick, so yeah. now what are you going to do? I, I mean, think about all the great franchises that Konami has built up, and this, these are not franchises that we're talking about in terms of, you know, Metamorphic Force and all these other beat-em-ups, X-Men, Turtles. Sure, the franchises individually, some of them, but not as video games. So, right. You know, you got to talk about Get your together, Konami. Castlevania, Metal Gear Solid, you know, the... Silent uh, Hill. Silent uh. Hill, yeah. <laughs> all these games that, like, they've created. Contra. Remember they announced Contra 3DS? Where was that? Yep. You know, that's gone. And I just think that... All the stuff that sold well to Japanese video game fans is no longer selling well in America. Or if it is, it's through things like Kickstarter. So I yeah. think we'll see new games in those franchises, but I think the only way that's going to happen is if Konami's just like, hey, let's just do Kickstarter just to raise some funds and then we'll put out the game just so it's like a, you yeah. know, we're not really losing any money. But like, you know, PS2 era, if they came out with this, Metamorphic Force on a compilation, a Konami compilation of like all the beat 'em ups, that would have been so sick. Yeah, the thing is with like with Konami though, that's a publicly held company. Right. You can't really say to your shareholders, well, that's what we're Sony gonna do did. a Kickstarter. We're gonna do a Kickstarter. Well, that's know? what Sony did. Sony backed the Shenmue Three Kickstarter along with right. Sega. Right. So, you, but as a as a publicly traded company, you right. can back a Kickstarter. Sure. Yeah. You can't do your own because your funds are coming from elsewhere already. Yeah. So I, I don't even think that's part of Kickstarter's. I think it can be done. Um, I think I think it just wouldn't be a good show for the company. I think, yeah. you know, as, as a viewed publicly, you know, you know, I they're trying would, to raise money without actually putting out a product when they yeah. have uh, they're a multinational conglomerate, right? You know, yeah, they own millions of dollars worth of stuff, but at the same time, because these titles are so niche, there's a huge risk in putting something like like if they made a collection of beat 'em ups, and I'm not even talking about turtles and you know, uh, Cowboys of Moo Mesa and all the games that have licenses behind them. I'm not even talking about that. Metamorphic Force is its own unique game. Right. The game that we're going to be talking about next after this is also a unique... Unique IP. So. I'm in unique brand new IP that's never been created previously. Those games, if they stuck them on a console collection or something like that, it just wouldn't sell nowadays. Yeah. PS2 era... Absolutely, it would have sold like hotcakes because back then, that was uh, compilations were all the rage back then. Yeah, Think there also needs to be some sort of a refreshment of interest in the brand. Like yeah. for instance, ukulele yeah. with Rare, and all of a sudden people are now interested in Rare games, and it's it's becoming a trendy thing. Right. So now Rare decides, hey, we can come out, we can ride this wave, yeah. and release these games, and then people will be interested. Right. In, you know, especially with you know. Uh, Microsoft bosses coming out wearing Battletoads shirts awesome. during there and, and putting Battletoads Battle Toad in shirt. Shovel Knight. You yeah. know, they kind of planted those seeds right. for Rare to come back. People start talking and then yeah. boom. And now GameStop is, is even getting in on it because of that meme where people always ask yeah. GameStop if they have Battletoads. Now they're putting ads out saying, yes, we finally have Battletoads. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so, you know, they, they've got that, but Konami doesn't have that, right. that, that kind of internet presence at this point. Yeah. It's, it's all negative at this point yeah. so they really need to do something to turn themselves around in the public eye but yeah. we're getting way off track here <laughs> <laughs> it's always a good discussion though because we're talking about a Konami beat em up we're talking about Konami as a, as a yeah. company yeah agreed so so Sage Sticks is broken up into two parts you've got part one which is the track that we're going to be playing through and part two which is right before you get to the final boss of the game correct Stage six, part one, is just awesome. You've got this incredible noodly guitar experience, which we'll talk about in a minute, but the stage itself is really very gorgeous, very castle-ish. Stained glass. Right, and, right. And just statues and, and faces carved into yep. stone. Lots of really, really cool stuff at this yeah. level. It's, you, it's kind of a treat to get to once you finally see it. You get to the part where you are at an elevator right before part two, and you, you're facing off against this like skeleton dude. Kind of looks like, like Skeletor a little bit. I would say Skeletor, or uh, better yet, Spinal from Oh Killer yeah, Killer yeah, Instinct. I can see that. Yep. Very Killer Instinct dish. And so you fight him, you de defeat him, and then you're rising up in this you know elevator because you know as we said, 
time and time again, all beat em ups have to have an elevator. Yeah, level. it's like a platform held by strings, but behind you is this gorgeous stained glass right, right. image of, uh, is it Athena, I think, that's Possibly. in the stained glass? I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's her. Yeah. And it's, it's really, cool. really, really pretty. Yeah, no, it's great. So, um, yeah, we're going to listen to The Warrior of Death Shadow Castle, which is stage six, part one. Back. That was Warrior of Death Shadow Castle, which was stage six, part one. Probably one of my favorite tracks. Again, besides from uh, the forest level, I can just like imagine like Trans Siberian Orchestra or something. Oh playing yeah, that track. Absolutely. Live. Just the orchestrations and the rock guitars and that, those huge drums. I mean, yeah. it's such an incredible song. Yeah, the orchestration is really strong here. It's really good. The weird thing about this is you've got a lot of different elements going on throughout this whole entire song. So you've got the orchestra elements, which are kind of doing their own thing. It's very ghouls and ghosts sounding. Yeah, very super that. ghouls and ghosts. And then you've got these random guitar licks that'll just come in out of nowhere. <laughs> <Which> <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, <laughs> just <laughs> randomly out of nowhere. It, I mean, it sounds great, it's cool, but th that is probably the best band that I could see covering a song like this. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I have everything all set up yeah. for that. And they've even got, um, like the, that brass section, like yeah. da, 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 and then there's the flute that comes in after that. It's, yeah. like, it's absolutely crazy. Yeah. These guys should not be composing for video games. No, they right? Be like, I don't even know. Yeah. Out on tour somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they are. It's Maybe possible. that's what they've been doing. It's possible. Yeah. I'd like to follow up. Where are they now? We'll do a little VH1 special. Yes. <laughs> Behind the music. Behind the metamorphic force. Correct. So after Warrior of Death Shadow Castle, you move on, you go up the elevator, right. you basically get into the throne room, fight some more guys. And the unique enemy in this level is like a four-armed alien-looking thing. Like, it might be an octopus. Like, mm -hmm. I don't really know what animal it's metamorphed from because they're all based on some animal. But they're super ugly. Well, the she-devil isn't. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. She's a metamorphed devil. She's a hot purple chick. Yeah. With a weird devil tail. I guess. Yeah, that's pretty know. much it. So eventually you get to the throne, and you get to the final boss, and he basically shouts, It's great you've made it here! That's it for your lives! <laughs> Come on, man. Seriously. Almost as good as Welcome to Die. Yeah. Almost. Almost. Not quite. I or still like I am, the... I am master. I am Magneto, master of magnet. Yeah. Or I won't let you step in this area. Yeah, yeah. I think, and then he, I think the first boss from this game is still my favorite yeah. from, from the game, at least. <laughs> so you end up fighting Death Shadow, and he looks like a kind of a big, beefy Simon Belmont. Yeah. A bit. Yeah, very like 
He's got the same kind of Deal. armor. Long beard, yeah, armor. Uh, I was gonna say more Thorish. It, it the whole game has it's that like Greek Thor Roman borrowed Simon's clothes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Guess it's got to go with the Castlevania music. You got yeah. the Castlevania villain. So he'll he'll or fight hero and uh, as the villain. Yeah, he'll fight and he'll taunt you throughout the game or throughout the battle. He's kind of a jerk. He'll be like, "You're a dead man. You're a jerk." Now you'll see my true strength, and then... So he's got three forms, just like every other boss in the right. entire world. <laughs> I have three forms. So he goes... I know. Yeah. Yes. You've only seen the first. Which is good, because yeah. I don't want to see the other ones. Yes. Yeah. I turn into a, a laser raptor. A where laser raptor? Where laser raptor bear tiger. And then what's your, your final Chicken. form? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm glad I haven't seen but, those yet. <laughs> Hi. So anyways, once you beat him the first time, he morphs into a dragon with a pretty cool animated sequence. He starts yeah. like bulking up and his muscles get big and yeah. wings sprout out of his back. Grows and, horns on, yeah. his, on his ankles, or no, on his um, kneecaps. Yes. And on his forehead. Yep. So he's a unicorn lizard dragon gargoyle. It's kind of a morph of everything. Yeah. All put into one. Mixed with Simon Belmont. So he kind of flies around and Does sprays stuff at you. Yeah. And punches the crap out of you and you punch the crap out of him. Yeah. And finally you destroy him. Yes. And this is the part that always gets me because after he goes down, a big ball of energy comes out of him. Right. It's kind and, of like a the spirit. music changes and there's a face in the ball and he just kind of floats to the middle and you're like, oh, I won. This must be like, yeah. he's going to come out and say something. But then he starts attacking you. Yeah. And I'm like, so the ending actually is not the ending. It's a guy that you have to fight. Right. They don't do a very good job at communicating that the final form is actually yeah. something that you have to fight. I just assumed so, that we had to fight him. punch everything. Yeah. I mean, that's my whole logic behind running guns and and beat them up. Keep punching and keep shooting everything until moves. everything is dead. Yeah. It's true. So, yeah, I think when we played this, you kind of were like, all right, that was it. And I'm like, nope. I'm like, and I never played it before either. So I was like, nope. Screw it. Let's keep still punching, punching this. If I can still, still punch, I'm going to still yes, punch. Yes, until, until the I computer cannot says punch. I can't punch anymore. Yes. yes. <laughs> Why not? So, anyways, yeah, you finally beat him. And you get to the end of the game, but before we start talking about that, we'll play the Death Shadow music from the first part of the final boss. Yes. And so this has some pretty interesting history behind it, but we'll talk about yes, that once we'll we get back. we'll talk about that when we come back. So take a listen to this crazy tune. Everybody take a deep breath. <sighs> <sighs> That's the end of the game, but let's talk about that track. Oh my God, what an amazing song. Seriously crazy. Yes, so good. And for those of you who are sitting here going, hmm, I've heard this before, kudos to you, because 
this song is a reimagining, I guess you could say, or a, a pretty much a no- It's a cover. It, it's a cover. The solo parts are definitely not a cover. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the actual main riffs and everything out of this song are straight up cover of Mahavishnu Orchestra's Birds of Fire, which if you're a jazz fusion guy like I am, you know that that is one of the essential albums that you need to have in your collection. The right up there with Return to Forever's Romantic Warrior, and I'd say probably Stanley Clark's first album, anything by Victor Wooten, and Weather Report, and I would say Jaco Pistorius' first album. Sorry. Speaking Greek to me, man. Yeah, sorry, I know. <laughs> I know you're not a jazz fusion guy, but man. It's kind I, of funny though that this game, like, of all the, yeah. the the songs that could have been like covered, oh yeah, it's like one of your favorite yeah. tracks from one of your favorite bands. It's crazy because, as <laughs> I was saying before during the break, before we before I realized what you know when you kind of clued me in, you were like, "Hey, this is this song." And I was like, "Oh my god, you're totally right. It is that song." Because I didn't really recognize it mainly because well, of the solo. It's right. sped up and it's tighter. Like Definitely. the original version, obviously being jazz fusion, is very loose, yes. very expressive, very sloppy, but but not like sloppy in the sense that they didn't know what they were doing. It was more like naturally it was sloppy. laid back, right? Because of the style of music of the jazz fusion. But this is like tightens places. it up, turns it almost into like a speed metal yeah. version of a jazz fusion song. It's which crazy. Is pretty cool. It's crazy. I mean, the solos are definitely improvised, but <clears> the main <throat> riffs that are there are just fantastic. So, if you are at all interested in this stuff, and you're like, wow. This is really awesome. And you're looking to maybe explore a little bit in terms of music, maybe not so much metal, maybe not so much electronic, like, you know, that's pretty much our bread and butter. Check out Jazz Fusion. We'll, we'll definitely post a link to the original track in yeah. the Facebook group so yeah, you guys can play kind it, of compare and contrast right. and figure out what the original song sounded like. Mm -hmm. So once you finally beat that ball of flame, kind of like a spacey world forms around you when you start fighting this boss. And then once, once the ball of fire comes out, Things get really trippy. Yeah. And everything just kind of disintegrates once you once you beat the third form. Even and the first form, you're back too. In the castle. Same thing with the first form. I mean, right it before. It gets spacey and a little bit wavy, yeah. but then when you start fighting that 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 energy ball, mm -hmm. things get super wacky. It every, gets like really LSD inspired. Every time I see it, it's I guess. Every time I see it, I always feel like I broke the game. Like yeah. I see the like crazy because it's like these weird swirling effects and it makes it look like the background froze almost. Yeah. And so you're like uh, but the music's still going, so... I'm wondering <laughs> if that's uh, more of an emulation flaw. Could be. Because there is a notice, like if you if you were to play this game in MAME, for instance, right. there is a notice that pops up that the video emulation isn't 100% accurate. Right. And I think it's there's a little, there's like color glitches here and there throughout yeah. the game that doesn't really detract from the gameplay at all, but they're kind of noticeably not supposed to be there. Right. So I'm um, just wondering if a lot of these effects that happen during the, the boss mm -hmm. might actually look a little bit different if you Could play be. on a real arcade. I haven't found any footage of this game playing on real hardware, so I don't have anything to compare it to. Yeah. Um, but if, like we said at the beginning of this show, if anybody is near a real arcade cabinet and can direct us towards one or take some video of one, it would yeah. be really cool to see the game playing on real hardware. Yeah, there's some YouTube footage that I've seen of this game, of the actual, I haven't watched like whole playthroughs, but there are definitely distinct differences color wise mm. between the original and the and the main version so cool. it just happens with emulation that's yeah. why emulation is always going to be more more accessible know. but less accurate exactly trade off yeah. unfortunately so but hey, we got to play it that's yeah. what matters exactly we had yeah. a ton of fun doing it exactly so uh once you beat them uh, like i said the uh, kind of trippy effect goes away you're you're back at the remnants of the throne room that have yeah. now been pretty much destroyed right and the castle starts to crumble under you you leap off the wall Seemingly to your doom, but of course you're not going to die. No. So never. then the outro track, the ending Into the Hopeful Sky, starts playing, and you see the credits, and you see the castle crumble. All the guys get an apartment. All the guys, you know, they move in together, they start yeah. a frat. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, your animal spirits are now the mascots of the college that right. they're at. Right, exactly. And everything's happy. Four, four, four mascots. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy! But it was a really fun game, you know. And 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 during the ending, like the uh, island and an island, it's very Castlevania-ish. The island, an island sinks. sinks into the ocean. Yes. And I didn't know you were on an island. I mean, yeah. I guess if I think back, it's got that kind of. No, I mean, it's really. I mean, you no, show up on the shore. I mean, who's going to put a coliseum but... on an island? You know. Uh, well, or maybe we... maybe the island is the last part, and you back were... up. Back up. Okay. Greece is an island. True. So does that mean that they just sang Greece? 
No, but I'm saying the Colosseum is in Greece. <laughs> yeah. Or no, the Colosseum's in Italy. Right, but I mean, I mean there like, are like Parthenons and, and everything like that right. in Greece. So. Yeah, but I mean, like it just kind of seems like the island was a lot smaller in terms of the visuals. Like when you're looking at it in the game. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. And well, it's just like, like a big mountain. Yeah, on nothing. But obviously, you were fighting through like outdoor levels and yeah. stuff. So I don't know. Whatever. It's the same thing with Contra. You Continuity know, you be, error. You be Contra, same thing. You know, the island sinks into the sea or whatever. Yeah, and Bionic Commando. Yeah. Sure. It's a giant base at the end yeah. that blows up. It's almost every game. Yeah. Except for Final Fight. It's just a good way to represent that everything that you just went through is now gone. Man, wouldn't that be terrible if at the end of Final Fight the whole everything just building blew up. crumbles? <laughs> the building crumbles? That would not be very good in a post 9 11 environment. No, well, the building was in the middle of a city, so yeah, that would kind of suck. Yeah, that'd be pretty terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. No, instead we just knock up a, a poor handicapped guy out the window. Right. Oh, well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Screw that guy. So it was. Firing, what are they called? Hey, he had his hands all over Hagar's daughter. That's true. Yes, very true. Yes, and those 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 hands those 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 yams are only meant for for Cody. Cody, thank you. Yes, yes. jealous guy. Yeah, jealous guy. Jealous guy. <laughs> well, he doesn't. He beats up Cody at the end. Of yeah, the I thought I thought that was weird. I, I don't know. Whatever. So, anyways, <laughs> <laughs> then the credits run and and the, uh, and the story at the end, uh, the credits. Kind of leave rolling. it open for a sequel. Yeah, but you can barely read them. They scroll so fast. It's just like, and then they all, and then the next. Yeah, part. there's <laughs> a lot of there's, there's a, a lot of text lot, on the screen, and text. it lasts. Go, it goes pretty quickly. And it's very like bright blue, you on know, an orange like, background. Yeah, and an orange. <laughs> it's like very hard to read. Basically, all it says though is that you know the evil has been vanquished, and the animal spirits return to their place that they were before. Athena calls them back, right? And they'll be ready for the next time evil tries to take over a, the world again. Which is immediately after. Evil is looking, yeah. looking to take over the world. Yeah. And it, which Although is, I'm looking to take over the world. <laughs> <laughs> I was having some tea. I don't actually want to. You know, I'm just kind of you know putting out some Looking feelers. into it. Yeah, There's yeah. Like an exploratory committee. Getting some feedback, maybe making a couple phone calls. So it's like a presidential campaign. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the empire of evil, you know, we're a new political party. We're trying to take over the world. <laughs> what would the Hi, public reaction be to this? World, uh, big fan. Uh, so, hey, how you doing? Listen, I'm gonna take you over. Is that cool? Is that cool? Yeah. Is and this cool? is the second time it's happening, so, yeah. You don't happen to have any, uh, animal spirits, <laughs> do you? Because that would suck. Yes. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this show. It's a very different thing for us. We'd love some feedback on it. Please post on our Facebook group, yeah. www.facebook.com slash groups slash Pixeltunes Radio. Tweet at us on Twitter at Pixeltunes Radio. Leave a comment on Mike's YouTube video. YouTube.com forward slash dongled for all your Pixeltunes Radio goodness, as well as dude, you haven't played this game. Yeah. Yeah, man. Totally. Super. So we're going to want to announce next week's... It's next week, not two weeks. Yes. Next week, two yes. episodes in a row, boys and girls. Yay. Because we love you so much. Yay. Next episode will be another Konami 1993 arcade-only beat-em-up by the name of Violent Storm. Yes. And there's just some amazing music in that game. There's I cannot great wait stuff. For, to get to that game. Yes. It's going to be so much fun. So hold on to your hats, boys and girls, and turn off your... Mame arcade cabinets and, I don't know, go eat some chili dogs. Stuff. Also, at this point, we have taken a look at our listener request music, and we've made our decisions, and so we, if we haven't contacted you yet, we should be contacting you shortly in preparation for our listener request episode volume one. Very impressive list of music that we received, and we will go over that at the time when it happens, which will be episode 40. Just to kind of round things off, make it nice and neat and fresh and clean. Yeah, we originally Super. announced episode 39, but because we've split this episode up into two different ones. Right. Um, so this will be episode 38. Violent Storm will be episode 39, which was not our original intent. Yes. 39 was going to be the listener episode, but because this, you could almost kind of call this like 38 and a half. Right. The listener request episode will still be Released on the same date, it'll just right. be episode 40 instead of 39. That's right, that's right. Basically, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, so, yeah. Looking forward to that as well. Keep in touch with us, please. As we've said, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Find us on Pixel Tunes Radio everywhere. We love talking with you guys. iTunes ratings are always appreciated. 
and reviews. Yes, jump on iTunes, give us a rating if you can. That really helps with spreading the show. So if you like what you heard and you want to hear more and you want us to kind of get our names out there, that would really be appreciative because the more music that we can share with the most amount of people is really our goal here at Pixel Tunes exactly. Radio. Exactly. And if you're not a social media freak, you don't have Twitter, you don't have Facebook, you can always go to pixeltunesradio.com. That's our blog. It's got all of our shows on there, both an MP3 that you can download and a YouTube video that's embedded that you can watch and you can leave comments underneath our under our episodes as well. Even going as far back as episode one, if you've got a comment to make, leave it there and we'll definitely see it and we can respond to you. That's right. So go be animals, you 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 wear werewolves and force your metamorph yeah. Wait, into what? submission. Oh. Alright then. That's that's weird. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I do. Alright, boys and girls, <laughs> we'll see you in one week with Violent Storm. Yeah, yeah. Feel my power.